Hi, welcome back. This is a quick tutorial on using lithography mask designs from AutoCAD to make 3D illustrations in Blender. So say you're microfabricating something. Maybe you need an array of electrodes or perhaps a microfluidic device. Chances are you made a lithography mask in AutoCAD to do the microfabrication. So now you want to illustrate these as nice 3D schematics and maybe you want to actually use your mask designs. It only takes a few clicks to go from AutoCAD into Blender. So let me show you how. To demonstrate, we'll make this device with interdigitated electrodes with some microfluidics on top. If you want to follow along with this exact design, I'll put a link to download this CAD file in the description box. So let's start off in AutoCAD. I've mocked up this hypothetical mask. It has interdigitated electrodes a single microfluidic channel and input and output ports for the microfluidics all in one file. Each of these elements though are held in three separate layers, but I've just put them one in one file for simplicity. In reality, if you're making something like this, I'd imagine the electrodes and the microfluidics might be on separate files. Step one is to save this file not as a .dwg, but as a .dxf. If you have a .dwg file, uh, you can also convert these online into .dxf files. Uh, I'll show some examples of where you can go on the screen. Step two is to come back to Blender and enable the .dxf uh, importer as an add-on. So to do that, you need to come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and type in dxf. And you should find that you get two options. Import export, import AutoCAD DXF format, which is the one you want. So go ahead and enable that. Step three, you now can import your design. Go ahead and press file, import, scroll all the way to the bottom and you should have AutoCAD DXF as an option. Select the file that you want. We need to take a look at some of the settings on the right. Under merge options, make sure you have merge by layer enabled. This makes sure that every item or every design element that's within one layer in AutoCAD gets grouped together as one object. Scroll all the way down and you want to look, at, look for the unit scale option here. This basically dictates the scaling of the geometry that you import. By default, and from my experience, Blender ignores any units that you've referenced in AutoCAD. So if your geometry was drawn in micrometers, if you just import it with unit scale of 1, it'll convert everything to meters. In reality, absolute scaling of units doesn't really matter, but you might want to change your unit scale to something smaller so that what you end up importing is not hundreds of meters in size. So what I like to usually do is set this to something like 0.1, or in this case, I'll set it to 0.01 just to make everything a little bit more manageable. Once that's ready, just click Import DXF, and you should find your AutoCAD design is now inside Blender. So the first thing to note is that all of your design has been imported as curve objects. If I just select the electrode array, come over to the outliner, you'll see that that corresponds to this curve, which has been layered zero curve. Same for the microfluidic channel as a separate curve, as well as the input output ports as another curve. For good housekeeping, I'm going to go ahead and rename all of these curve objects. Just as a little side note, if you've created objects in your design using the array function from AutoCAD, you'll find this gets loaded as each of those instances of the array as separate objects all of them parented to an empty. To make it easier to handle in those cases, what I will do is I will select all of the instances and press Ctrl J to merge them together as one object. Step five, with our design now imported into Blender, we're ready to start making some 3D elements. I'll go ahead and hide the microfluidics and we'll focus on the electrodes first. To convert this curve into geometry, I'm going to use geometry nodes. Let's open a new tab and open the geometry node editor. Click new for a new node tree, call these electrodes. The operation to solidify curves into actual geometry is, is quite simple. First thing you want to add is a fill curve node, and that in itself is already most of the work done. You can't see here, but if I come into rendered mode, 
you'll see that Geometry Nodes has now filled in the inside of the curves to create faces. How the curve is filled will depend on whether you select triangles or engons. In this case, it doesn't particularly matter, so I'll keep it at triangles. To make it actually three-dimensional, we need to do another operation, which is to extrude this filled curve with some uh, to give some height. So for that, go ahead and search for a extrude mesh node. Plug that in, and uh, that's doing something ridiculous. So the level of extrusion is controlled by this offset scale value. Go ahead and bring that down to something more manageable, like 0.1. And there we already have a good looking set of electrodes. In this case, the only thing left to do is to apply a material. Go ahead and look for a set material node. Plug that in. Come down to the shader properties, create a new material, name it electrodes, and let's give that a metallic material with a little bit of a gold like color. Perhaps drop the roughness down to something like 0.2. With that done, come back to the geometry nodes and select electrodes in the set material option. And there, very easily, you have created your array of electrodes from the AutoCAD design uh, and turn it into a 3D object. For this scene, I would also like a substrate. I don't want the electrodes floating on their own, but for them to sit on top of something like a silicon wafer. So I'll go ahead and just quickly model that. To make things easier to view, I do currently have an HDRI plugged in. I'm just going to go ahead and rotate that so I can get a better view of what's happening with the geometry. So that's the electrodes done. Let's go ahead and add the microfluidics. Let's make the microfluidic channel curve visible again. So for the microfluidic channel, we don't want to solidify what's inside the curve, but rather fill out the outside. We can use the same approach we did to create the electrodes, but this time we need to supply geometry nodes with a new outer bound to tell it where to fill from up to these microfluidic channels. Let's create a new node tree, call it microfluidics, and the first thing we're going to do is create that outer bound. So first add a join geometry node, and into that plug in a, a quadrilateral node, which is also a curve. And you'll see that's overlaid a quadrilateral. Let's go ahead and also add a translate geometry node. Now it's a matter of changing the width and the height of the quadrilateral as well as where it's positioned to make sure it's sitting roughly symmetrical to the channel uh, and also of a appropriate size. I'm imagining a chunk of PDMS from which this microfluidic channel will be made. Let's create a small block to surround this channel. So with the outer bounds created, let's go ahead and repeat what we did for the electrodes. First add a fill curve node, and that now does what you expect it to do, fill the area around the channel. If we hadn't done that, and you just plug in the fill curve again, you just fill the inside like so. Just as before, we now need to extrude the mesh, and let's bring down the offset scale again. Just a quick note about the extrude mesh node, if I go ahead and hide all the other elements, and we look underneath the microfluidic channel, you'll see a couple of funky things happening that are not desirable. The first is all of these extra faces that are being created upon extruding the mesh. This will lead to problems, for example, if we add a transparent material to this object, so we want to get rid of those. The first thing you want to do is click individual. So now that basically means that uh, the faces from which you're extru extruding with this extrude mesh node, uh, don't get individually extruded. So that'll solve a lot of the problems. The second problem is that there is no bottom face. So it's basically extruded upwards, but use that bottom face to be pushed up. So now we need to add back the original face to make this a fully enclosed 3D object. What you want to do is duplicate the join geometry node, plug it in after the extrude mesh, and take the fill curve operation and join that together with the extruded geometry. And so now we have bottom and top faces with a fully solid object. Go ahead and bring back the substrate and everything else. So one last step is to add a material, something like a pdms -E material. So again, add a set material node after the join geometry into the shader editor. And let's make a PDMS, PDMS material. This is going to be a very crude material, but let's just make something that is very transparent roughness of 0.2 and the color all the way up to white. Select PDMS in the set material node and let's just check how that looks in rendered view. 
and it's looking roughly reasonable. So we can now position that to sit directly above the electrodes. Press G and then Z to move. Bring it down till it meets the substrate. At this point, you may need to rescale the substrate that the electrode is sitting on or move it around so that the microfluidics is not hanging over the edge. For the input output ports, let's go ahead and drag that up a bit so we can see them. It is very much the same process as what we just did for the microfluidic channel. So go ahead and take the input output ports and you can open a new geometry node tree and just take microfluidics uh, and just copy that onto the ports and it should work absolutely fine. And there we go. So also bring that down so that it's sitting on top of the channel. Um, it's looking a little bit dark. Another thing you want to make sure is to come to the render properties and the light parts. You might want to play around with the transmission and transparent light bounces to make sure that you get adequate number of bounces popping around the material. In this case, I have the transmission value set to four. Um, you're not quite able to see the electrodes underneath. So if we take that transmission value and start pumping it up, something like six, we can now see all the way through. Of course, this is what happens if you're doing this all in cycles. It'll look very different if you do this in EV, uh, which is a different story. I will not touch on that today. So that is more or less done. For completeness, you might want to model some tubing to connect to the input output ports. Let's hide everything once. Go ahead and press Shift A and add a Bezier curve. Let's also use geometry nodes for this. Click new to create a new node tree. And you want to use the curve to mesh node. Drop that in. And in the profile curve socket, add a curved circle node. And use that to solidify it into a tube. Let's drop the radius down to something a bit more manageable. So now we have a tube that we can move around, change the shape of by just controlling the positions and rotations of the control handles. Let's also give this a little bit of thickness. Again, add an extrude mesh node. In this instance, you can clearly see what having the individual option selected does. It takes the faces and with individual enabled, it just extrudes each face, but then disconnects it. Let's make the thickness again, something more reasonable. The shading goes very wonky. If you've got shade smooth done here, uh, it smooths around the edges of the tubing, uh, which is not what I want. If you also don't want that, you can remedy that by adding a set shade smooth node. Take the side selection output of the extrude mesh into the selection and untick shade smooth. This now should result in your outer wall of the tube being nice and smooth, uh, but it still retains the sharp edge at the edges of the tube. Let's also add a set material node for the tubing. Come to the shade editor, add a new material. Let's start with the BDMS, but duplicate it by pressing the number next to it and call it tubing. And let's just bring up the roughness to something like 0.2. One last step, let's add the tubing back into the microfluidic ports. And that's basically it. A simple way to work with mask designs from AutoCAD and bringing them into Blender to make illustrations. As always, please leave a like and a comment if this was useful. Subscribe for more tutorials like this and I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.